Welcome back to What Are Teen Nibs with General Disturbance. This is a Lorraine 155 Mini 51. That's the tier 8 French SPG and we're located on the north spawn of Malinovka and it's under the command of McHammered. Now the Lorraine 155 51, well the 51 represents the year of the design, 155 represents the caliber of the gun and it was made by Lorraine. It's one of two SPGs that were built uh, as a proposed SPG for use by the French Armed Forces, but it never got built, it never got put into production. Uh, they weren't satisfied with it. It was a redesign of the 15550, which is the design made in 1950, uh, where the gun was further forward. This one, uh, the gun was more centrally, and you can see uh, it's uh, based on the Lorraine 40 ton chassis. And he's gone straight into the aim. He's got a leopard prototype as his first target. Dialing in. 28 rounds of ammunition. And we've lost sight of that target, but we do have a couple of targets we can shoot at. And uh, there's a strip S1 right next door to that building. And although we can't see him, he's probably still there. We've lost sight of the Malbreaker, and the Striv has actually moved. So it was a good job we didn't fire at that uh, unknown position, or that position that the Striv previously occupied, because he's not there anymore. We've fired around into the side of that building, hoping to splash the Striv, and we've stunned him. And he's gone down, so we picked up the stun assist. So it was useful. Now, we've got a spotter in the spotting bush, uh, in Grid Square E4 at the moment. Now it's very likely there's an enemy spotter in the corresponding bush south of uh, that mark, but um, I think that's in Grid Square G6. But instead, what McCammon is going to do, he's going to fire at the hill because he's going to support his heavy tanks up there. And uh, there we've got a T54 and an Object 430U. The 430 use a tier 10 Soviet heavy, uh, medium rather, not heavy. And so is the uh, the T54 is the tier 9 medium. And there's a Conqueror, that's the British tier 10 heavy. We're dialing in on him, another 10 seconds to go. He's marked the target with his tiki. Tell everyone that's what I'm firing at. Lining up the shot, working out exactly when he needs to shoot, and rounds out, and yes, direct hit right onto the engine bay, 347, that's how it's done. You line the shot up, you keep your aim absolutely perfectly steady, and then let the Conqueror move into the field of fire, leading the target, and then the shell arrives at the same moment that the tank does. Okay, he's got another shot lined up on this Conqueror. He's backing away and round out and... Oh! Well, he got that one slightly wrong because the shell landed behind the Conqueror, but it still tracked him. So he had to burn his repair kit to keep moving. He's backing away down that hill. Our forces at the top of the hill are uh, firing down at him. We're almost ready to shoot again. Okay, rounds out. He's stationary. And that's a direct hit for T-42 and the Conqueror's killed immediately afterwards. So he got the stun assist. Now there's a number of uh, tanks holed up in that area with the trees and the rock firing up at our guys. But we've got a T-10 making a rush, a dash down to try and force the enemy to focus on him. And then obviously his teammates could follow, but they didn't. So he has suffered severe damage, and he's going for a Carnarvon AX action 10. And got a hit for 261, but we lose the T10. I think the rest of the team didn't get the memo about attacking quickly as possible. Now that T54 is probably the only one that we can hit at the moment, because the others have all disappeared from sight. But we're almost ready to shoot. Lining up the shots. Okay, following him back wherever he's going. No, he's going to go forward from that point and lines up the shot and round out. Yes! And it wipes him out. Perfect. Goes straight into him, into his side, wipes him out. That's 246 hit points there. 
and our first kill. Now, there's still some tanks there, but they've gone unsighted. They're in the trees. Okay, we're loaded, but we're going to have to wait for this 113 to spot the enemy. There's one of them. It's an object 430U, and we're lining up the shot. He must know that he's been spotted. We're getting a request for fire on him, and there's the Carnarvon. Round out on him, and 255 hit points off him. It's tracked him as well, and he's been stunned. Lining up the next shot for the object 430, and we're indicating that as our target using the Tiki. Very useful to let our colleagues know where we're shooting, what we're shooting at. And we followed the 430 down, but he's pulling back him up again, and the shell goes in, but it lands short. And all it does is stun the 430U. But we have picked up some stun assist. We're now indicating the Carnarvon action 10. Okay, he's lost virtually all his hit points, so he's a one-shot now. He's still firing, That's the, so that might be a good idea to fire at him to uh, take him out of the game. Yep, that's what um, McCammon's going to do. Rounds out, and... Yep, well, he went down. I don't think that was to our shell, though. I suspect our Object 430 got him from the lakeside. And we're now going for the Object 430U. Yep, marked him as our target. So when we mark a target with a T key like that, it actually does put a message in chat saying that we are attacking that target. And that helps let the other team members know where the shell is being directed. And if we can't see a target, we'll indicate a target on the ground and that will tell them which area we're looking at. Okay, we've got a grill of 15. He's hiding behind that rock. We're going to put a shell into him. We're dialed in. Rounds out. Should go straight. Yes, it does. Oh, we got a fire. Oh, we did. We got a fire. But unfortunately, he was killed by the 430U before the fire could kill him. And it. so, it. unfortunately, we lose out on getting the arsonist badge. And the 430U takes the kill, but we get the effect. Now, we've got an AMX 50B having a little bath. He's sitting in that little lake, using it for cover. Round out. Well, that's kicked up the water. Nice ripple effect there. I suspect he's still in there because we've got a whole number of tanks nearby. And they haven't seen him come out of the water yet. Okay, we're almost ready to shoot at the Leopard prototype. We've indicated that as our target. And... Nope. He's not close enough, and we can't get a clear shot yet. Now we can. Round out, and... Yes! That's Splash. 216 hit points. And the Amex has suddenly appeared, but we're focusing on the Leopard at the moment. He's full health, or... Well, 40% health, actually. But he's got more hit points than the AMX, and the AMX has since been killed. So we're going to continue with the Leopard prototype for the meanwhile. Okay, we're loaded. Now, that Leopard knows full well that we're loaded, and he's trying to stay behind cover. He's also probably aware that uh, there are enemy tanks approaching his cap from the east and so his attention has probably gone on them the Malbreaker is looking in that direction I think the Leopard prototype is also looking in that direction and he's just been wiped out by our T110E3 and the Leopard's just been wiped out by the Object 263 now so that means we own the enemy's cap and there's the Object 430U, one of last two enemies, and we're now capping. That's going to be uh, create the siren on these enemies and get them slightly worried. I don't think there's a hope that they're going to survive this because uh, they're hopelessly outnumbered. 
Okay, we trapped the 430U. And he's gone down. So we got some damage assistance there. Because uh, he was hit and damaged by whilst he was tracked and stationary. And the T-30 goes down and that's the end of the game. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And it's an ace tanker for McHammond in the Lorraine 155 Mini 51. He also picked up a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 13. And a Confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy on than anyone else on his team. Let's have a look at the team scores. Well, if we look at the team scores, we can see that it's actually the enemy who managed to score the highest amount of damage. The Object 430U, he managed 4,271 hit points. Uh, then we have the um, Object 263 on our own team for 3,490. And then we have uh, the AMX 50B, he managed 3,068. And McHammond managed to get 2,856 hit points of damage. Uh, when it came to kills, it was the Object 430U managed to get three kills. Then we had a whole bunch of tanks that managed to get two kills. And McCammett only managed to get one kill here. But when it came to base XP, he was right at the top of the table. 1,226 hit points, uh, hit points, experience points, uh, base experience points in that battle. And the reason that was so high will become self-evident when we look at the next uh, uh, page. Because he fired 14 rounds, got 5 direct hits, 5 penetrations and 10 splash. Damage of 2,856 hit points, all at more than 300 meters. He damaged 8 of the enemy, killed 1. But he did damage assistance of 694 hit points. And stun assistance of 1,660 hit points of 14 stuns. And it's the combination of these two, which of course you earn half of the XP for those shots. And add that to the full XP that you earn for the actual shots you do yourself on target and that brought about the highest uh, XP in this battle. So if we look at the um, the credits, we can see that he earned 51,155 credits. He had a personal reserves bonus running at the same time for 25,578. And that brought up a total of 76,733 credits. And after ammunition resupply, and the ammunition is really cheap. It's 155 millimeter rounds. Doesn't have much in the way of splash radius, but it can certainly do the job. He took away 61,053 credits from the game and earned 1839 xp and there was no multipliers so i'm afraid that's all he took away but a pretty good battle there for um uh McCammard, but he actually states that his crew has only got 80 percent uh of their skill uh on this uh, particular rt i'm not sure he actually has had it that long but he still managed to get the the mastery even though he's only got 80 percent uh, of their training completed so uh, that's very good going if that's the case uh, because his a lot of his shots were going bang on target and if you've got um, uh, less than 100% training uh, you'd expect a few of them to be going uh, quite wide of the target even if you fully dialed in so uh, congratulations on that victory if you enjoyed this replay please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel and hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video